Well, it's really at its early stages, um, and it's a swine virus that's now moved into the human population. And uh, that's very uncommon. That hasn't really happened uh, since 1918, actually. So there's a lot of parallels with the 1918 pandemic, and um, it's still at its early stage, so it's hard to predict. How many people died in 1918? Uh, between 20 and 50 million. And then the, world, the world's population was about a quarter of what it is today. Wow. That, that so. was, it was a major pandemic. Uh, and how many were infected versus how many actually succumbed to the illness? About a third of the world's population got infected over like a two-year period between 1918 and 1919. And a quarter of the world's population died? No. Okay. Um, a third of the world infected. Uh, about um, 3% of the people that got infected died. So when you look at this what is your first instinct then to where how far it's going to go how widespread it's going to be what are we looking at down the road well in 1918 it pretty much followed the pattern that it's following right now and it started in the late spring it was a rather mild um, pandemic uh, most of the doctors didn't even think it was flu it kind of disappeared over the summer and then it reemerged in the fall then that's when most of the deaths were. And um, in that time period, the at-risk group was really um, previously healthy young adults. And it was really their immune system that did them in. And that's exactly what's happened in Mexico. So all, most of the deaths in Mexico have been between ages of 25 and 44. Relatively young, healthy yeah, people. The very old and very young. I think most well. of us think it's a third world country, and it's because of their health care or because no. they weren't healthy no. to begin with. No, it was, it was a very tight age group. The older and younger did fine. These patients did fine initially for two or three days, and they took a sudden turn for the worst. They got atypical pneumonia, and about 10% have died. So what about vaccines? I mean, we've got time now to mix up a vaccine in the next few months, correct or no? You don't well, think? No, we, we have time, but the, the virus changes. So the existing vaccines won't really work very well. There's the seasonal flu, which is against the same serotype. It's also H1N1. But the difference between human and swine is fairly significant, and there'd be very little cross-reactivity. So the requirement would be to make a new vaccine targeting H1N1. Now, the virus that's in Mexico, as well as in California and Texas, that has been isolated, and those, those sequences are virtually identical. So there's really no difference between Mexico and the United States. The difference in the fatalities, there have been no, there have been no fatalities in the United States, and there have been very few hospitalizations, is probably just a timing issue. That it started in Mexico, probably at, at the level it's at the United States, probably in January, February. They had the first fatality in March. And so we're really trailing them. And you can see the dots. That we have to get to the level that's in Mexico City, and then there'll be a similar level of pneumonia and, um, and deaths. Now, in the, the United States' favor, it started later. And flu usually follows a seasonal pattern. So there's a tendency for it to go lower over the summer although it may cause problems in the southern hemisphere because the virus is more viable in the, summer hem the southern hemisphere over the summer. So this is the map today. What's that map going to look like in another month? Oh, in another month? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you won't see anything. At, the, at this level of resolution, you will not see the United States. It will be totally covered in those dots. You're pretty yeah. doom and gloom. Well, the dots are pretty big at this resolution, so it's, it's, not, it's, it's not quite as bad. Lord love a duck, I hope so. No, but you see that we're just at the beginning stages, in your opinion, and what... what? These, these really came up in about two days. I mean, so prior to that, there were just a couple down in Southern California in the United States. So everything other than Southern California has really been since the weekend. And... Uh, and that's, it's, it's, there's more now than there was a couple hours ago. So why are you, what do you, you got involved, you did this doc because of why? Why did you, you introduce the flu tracker? Just right. tell me its origin and why. Well, recombinomics is really looking at how the virus evolves. And it re evolves by recombining with 
in this case it'll be with the human uh, H1N1. And so by looking at how the virus has moved in the United States and around the world, that will help identify which viruses come in contact with each other and that will help predict what the virus will look like in the fall so that a vaccine could get started earlier. So what are you going to do with this data, this information? Who, is, who will you provide this to and make it available to? Um, well, we've just started, and the government has already expressed an interest. Uh, FEMA has already um, expressed some interest in, in looking at that data because they're also trying to track all the viruses worldwide.